Scott Holbrook, president of Secure Tool. Just want to make a quick video for you guys. Just got done doing an outdoor install. You can see the antenna there in the background up against the mountains of Arizona. Beautiful day. Uh, I want to do a quick video just to give you guys some of the top lessons that we've learned as we've installed over 40 routers now. The, uh, the first lesson would be to start small. Uh, there is no need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on an installation setup before you even know if the spot works. Uh, last thing you want to do is, is set something up like this uh, with your you know, new fancy antenna and, and then find out that it just doesn't work for you know, HOA purposes or the internet's not good or there's too much foliage. You know, any number of reasons could keep a hotspot from, from being an earner. And so before you go out and you know, improve your setup, you know, put a basic setup up, make sure that you're actually getting your witnesses, you're making some HNT, and then if you want to go off and improve it, go ahead and do it incrementally. I mean, don't change everything at once because you got to test things, but go ahead and you know, get that, that upgraded antenna, maybe a 5.8, maybe an 8, depending on the, the situation. Uh, you might find that a 3 works best, uh, but you won't know that until you, you, know, you start incrementally. You got to start small. Don't, don't think that your first setup is going to be you know, how it ends. The, the second lesson that we have learned is routers go down. Routers go down more often than you would, than you would like to think. Uh, more often than Helium would like to go down too, I'm sure. Uh, they do have some software updates in the process that should take care of some of that. But you know, the fact of the matter is it is a telecom network. And there's a reason that AT&T and Verizon employs you know, fields of technicians. It's because their towers are always needing repaired. Your towers, your IoT towers are going to be exactly the same way. And so what you want to do is you want to, you know, number two, stay close to home. You don't want to be traveling too far uh, in order to fix routers when they go out. And if you have them at host locations, it's not always the best to put your eggs in that basket thinking that the host is going to be willing or able to, to do the repairs that, uh, that you have. Uh, as a corollary to this, if you are using help in order to establish your router footprint over a, a larger geographic area, make a checklist. You know, make a, a series of steps that anyone can follow whenever a router goes down that usually brings it back up. And then if they follow that checklist and it doesn't work, then you'll have to go out yourself. But, you know, at least then we can minimize the amount of travel uh, that you have. So, so number one, don't go all in at the beginning. You know, start small, start incrementally. Make sure you get the H&T. Number two, uh, make sure that you have a plan for the outages and that you're close to home so that you can service those things. Uh, and then number three is just going to be location, location, location. You know, the next three can be location. And I mean that in, in, in a number of ways. You know, one, of course, stay close to home. But two, you want to make sure that you find the, uh, the best spot for the antenna. And that's going to be a matter of trial and error. You know, radio frequency RF is a very, very weird thing. It bounces off of walls. It bounces off of the ground. It, it pinballs itself in between trees and buildings. You, know, you really never know. There's really no way to know which antenna spot is going to give you the best reception. There are tools out there like, you know, HRF. There are tools out there like Helium Vision that can kind of help guide you. Uh, but those are kind of blanket tools. And in order to know how your hotspot is going to perform in your location and what antenna spot is going to be the best, you have to go there and you have to adjust it around, you know, every couple of weeks to, to make sure that you are, you know, fine tuning and getting the, the best coverage that you can possibly get. Uh, and so those would be the top three lessons that, that we've learned. Uh, you follow those, you'll definitely make more H&T. You know, the first one, start small, don't spend all your money at once on a setup that may or may not work. Uh, number two, stay close to home and be prepared for outages. You are going to have to go fix them. Um, and then number three, location, location, location. Make sure that you find the best spot for the antenna. And the only way to do that is going to be by trial and error. Uh, if you have any more questions, be sure to follow our, our YouTube channel here. We'll be posting all kinds of Helium content. Uh, our Helium content is not made for people that want to do you know, outdoor installations on top of 5,000 foot mountain peaks in the middle of nowhere. You know, ours are for real people who are real installations with businesses, homes, you know, in urban areas. You know, we make it practical. And so be sure to follow the YouTube channel, the, the Facebook, you know, all of our social media, you know, LinkedIn, uh, Reddit, to make sure that you get the practical advice and knowledge that you need in order to have the most successful Helium network that you can.